Hello and welcome back and that's right today we're going to compare two of the current generation Synology 8 Bay devices and I think it's incredibly important to say right off the bat the whole reason for this video is because so 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 many users asked for it so much so I just naturally assumed I'd already made this video and it wasn't until recently while running the support system again self plug self plug that we do our support system where if you go over to Ko-Fi or Patreon you can hire me or Eddie to help you out for a data consultation loads and loads and loads and loads of photo and video editors worldwide were asking about uh, the best technology video editing NAS to go for and they were stuck between going for the DS1821 Plus and the DS1823 XS Plus. Two NASs that cost about 800 to a thousand nicker different in price. I say nicker, could be pounds, could be dollars, could be euros, could be Hong Kong dollars, could be anything. But ultimately the price difference between them knocking out about to 800 to a thousand nicker for two NASs that looks super duper similar and in today's video I'm going to compare them but I think it's pretty important I hate seagulls to highlight that frankly right off the bat I'm going to give you the TLDR that 1821 plus is the no-brainer choice and by the end of this video I would have explained why but right now if you are on the fence and you're looking for the quick 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 answer to whether to go for the 1821 plus or the 1823 xs plus i'll tell you right now it's the 1821 plus don't watch anymore go away that's the one to buy but if you still need a bit more convincing and you still want to know why i held that position let's go straight away Let's talk about what they've got in common. Regardless of which one of these two you go for, you're going to get a Synology NAS, you're going to get a Synology 8-bay NAS, a Synology 8-bay NAS that supports 8 bays of storage. You can populate it one by one if you choose, so add drives every few years and expand the RAID, or you can fully populate it on day one. They both arrive with two M2 NVMe slots inside that could be used for caching or could be used for storage. They both support adding expansion devices, two of the DX517 expansions, to add an additional 10 bays of storage to to your overall storage array. They also both arrived with support of the entirety of Synology's DSM application and services and tools, all of them. If you wanna run it, these can do it with one notable exception later on. I bet you can guess what it is. Um, if you can guess what it is, put it in the comments with the timestamp. But between the two of them, you are getting a complete and ready to go Synology NAS platform. But you didn't come here to know what's the same, did you? You wanna know what's different. You wanna know which one's better for your needs. And I tell you right now, between the two of them, the hardware architecture, they both arrive with AMD embedded uh, Ryzen processors. They're both quad core. Uh, they both arrive with ECC error correcting code memory. But our big difference there is the um, 1821 uses a slightly, and I really do mean slightly, older generation embedded Ryzen from the V1000 series. It arrives with a V1500B, a quad-core CPU that runs at 2.2 gigahertz per core, no integrated graphics, and the system arrives with 4 gig of DDR4 ECC memory that can upgrade it to 32 gig. That CPU is an x86 processor that's 4 core, Eight threads so we've got some lovely virtual CPUs that the system can assign to different tasks now the 1823 XS Plus again near enough identical but it uses a newer generation uh, um, uh, V1000 uh, series embedded processor the V1780B now that has got a higher clock speed which means it has more power it will consume a bit more power in operation but it's got more power under the bonnet of pre accessible more precisely more than a gigahertz so 3.3 gigahertz base on its quad core architecture four core eight thread it can also be bursted up to 3.6 gigahertz it also has eight gig of ddr4 memory rather than the four again ecc upgradable to 32 gig now that was a lot of jargon wasn't it there's was a lot of all that what I'm saying is, overall, what you can take away from all of that guff that I just said is, this device here has got more memory, so it can run more active processes at any given time. It also has a higher clock speed CPU, which means it has more power under the bonnet to get things done. Ultimately, the 1823 means it's got more resources to do more. So ultimately, at any given task that you hand to this, this will use less of its total resources to get the job done, which means it can do more. That's what all of that guff meant. So at this point, you're thinking, why are you recommending that one? Why, why that one when this one seems to be able to do a lot more? Well, this can have its memory upgraded. So even though, obviously on paper, they've got this, you know, very similar hardware architecture and there's more to be done there, 
if you're not going to use all that raw power, if you don't have the largest spec enough organization to take advantage of it, you'll be paying for hardware resources you may not use. But there are ways to upgrade this system to that level down the line in a way where you can actually save money in upgrading this to this, for the most part, for less money than it costs to actually buy it. But more on that later. If we look at the ports and connectivity of these devices, they have some similarities. They both arrive with a, you know, multiple uh, network interfaces there. They've both got USBs. We're not even going to talk about the USBs because Synology supports external storage and not a huge amount else. You can assign them to VMs, but they're largely identical anyway. And they both arrive with PCIe upgrade slots at generation three times eight speed. So between the two of them, quite similar. However, this device, the 1821, has got four gigabit Ethernet ports that are on the rear. Now you can use one if you like. You can have two, a failover. That means if one connection fails, you've still got a fallover one. And you can also combine four of them together at one gigabit Ethernet. And those four ports together with link aggregation port trunking or SMB multi-channel, depending on your own protocol of choice to basically cram them all into one, even load balancing to take it in turns allows you to get up to four gigabit Ethernet. Now this system has got two of those one gig ports but it's also got a 10 gigabit port. Those seagulls are really putting me through my paces today, aren't they? That 10 gig port off the bat is one of the reasons this thing's a lot more expensive. You've got faster CPU, more memory, but you've also got a greater bandwidth there at the net, on the network on the rear. So you might be thinking, again, why are you recommending this device here when this device has clearly got more network bandwidth out the gate? You're right, it's got 10 gig, it's got a couple of two, so it's got 12 gig of potential network bandwidth when this has only got four. So why is this still your pick, Rob? Why are you being weird? Don't call me weird. Well, because this can be upgraded, just like I mentioned. You can get a 10 gig upgrade card, Synology's 10 gig single port upgrade. Pick that up. Again, that's about 120 to 150 nicker, depending on your currency. That means rather than spending 800 to 1,000 nicker more on this, you could just go ahead and spend 120, 130, 150 on the outside and add 10 GBE. You add that card, this has now got 14 gig of potential network upgradability there. Uh, on top of that, there are numerous single and dual port cards from Synology, which means you can add two 10 GBE ports if you want to. Of course, you can do that on this. Of course you can. But if you weren't going to use that anyway, then it's not really an option. Now, Another thing we can talk about, a big difference between these devices, is warranty. Because warranty, software warranty is effective lifetime, 10 to 12 years in most cases, I've talked about in other videos, but the hardware warranty is how long the brand will hold your hand in case of uh, hardware issues on your system. A guarantee, a warranty, whatever you want to call it. With the 1821 arriving with three years of warranty and the 1823XS with five years. And if you're a business, five years of hardware support sounds nice, right? Well, a lot of users don't seem to realize that Synology does warranty extensions, which cost between um, 50 and 60 nicker a year. That means this three-year warranty can be expanded to five years of warranty for between 100 to 120 nicker. So, so far, if you spend a, an extra, let's go maximum, if you spend 150 quid, you can add 10 GBE to that device. If you spend another 110, uh, 120 quid, you can add five year warranty to this device. So that means to add 10 GBE and to get the same level of network connectivity, the same level of support on this device, right now is so far costing us uh, 270 pounds. Remember the price difference between these was 800 to 1000 nicker. Now, on top of that, you're going to add four gig of uh, memory, aren't you? Now, Synology has its own in-house memory as well. You can get their own memory modules, and they've got four, eight, and 16 gig ECC memory modules. So they're ready to go. Now, the four gig module will set you back about 70 to 80 nicker. So again, even when we throw that on the top there, we're still living in the three to 400 nicker bracket. And we've largely emulated everything here the only thing this seems to have that this doesn't is that high speed cpu and if you were never going to use it in the first place to its fullest extent you've saved yourself somewhere in the region of 500 to 600 nicker just going for the older box and either one upgrading it on day one 
or gradually over time when you need these options when you need 10 gbe when you need more memory you can just add them and spread the cost over time ultimately meaning that you can save a bit of bunts getting the 1821 plus cheaper out the gate yes you're losing out on a higher peak cpu performance and yes you are missing out on having all of these things on day one and do remember that the warranty needs to be applied quite early in your purchase for it to be applied but still nonetheless that's why at the beginning of this video i highlighted so strongly that the 1821 is the better choice of the two but it doesn't stop there if you were thinking the video was going to end roll credits it doesn't because there's actually two more reasons why this device is better than that one now number one this device supports Synology Hybrid RAID, SHR. That is when, in a th standard RAID configuration, we can look at these devices here, when you're adding drives gradually over time, you know, a few years from now, there could be bigger hard drives on the market. There could be cheaper hard drives on the market. The price per terabyte of the average drive may have come down significantly. So when that happens, you might want to add bigger drives over time, right, right, right? SHR allows you to do that. SHR allows you to use the bigger and better drives. Excess series devices from Synology do not support SHR. That's right. How annoying is that? The Excess series will only support traditional RAIDs, which although give you a higher performance, will not allow you to use uh, drives. A uh, traditional RAID array will see the smallest drive in the array and class every single drive in it. So you could have a 1TB drive and 7 10TBs, that system will treat every single one of them like one TB. SHR will allow you to mix and match those drives. And that's a reason why the 1821 is going to be appealing for those of you that are going to be scaling up over time, not just the network port and the memory and the warranty, but because you can add and mix and match those other drives. Secondly, when going for the 1821 Plus, it's worth highlighting that there's an eight, let's be realistic, there's probably going to be an 1824 Plus on the horizon. There's going to be a newer generation unit just around the corner. So when that newer generation unit comes out, that newer generation unit almost certainly is going to have the same CPU as this. We've seen it already with Synology utilizing the V1780B on other devices. And if a newer generation 8 bay arrives on the scene with just that same CPU, and you weren't going to take advantage of that uh, performance increase anyway, then it's no point waiting for it. But moreover, when that newer generation unit comes out, this one's going to get even cheaper. So when this gets even cheaper, you can still get all those upgrades and save yourself even more bunts. Ultimately, between the two of them, the 1821 Plus just makes more sense. I really like this. And if you watch my review and my should you buy on the DS1823 uh, XS Plus, I do think this is a really, really good system. I think it's a beefy system and I do recommend it. But there's no denying that if you are someone looking at these two systems, this one just makes more frigging sense. And I recommend it above and beyond in the long run and in the short term as well. Thank you so much for watching. Again, thank you, I think, to at least five or six Zoom consultations I did where people were making this comparisons. And it's you guys that have helped me get this video ready and emulate these points so well. So if you were one of them, you know who you are. Thank you so much for watching. If you do need support in your setup, if you're a photo video editor or uh, any kind of uh, a business or even home professional that needs a little bit of a helping hand with your setup needs and choosing the right stuff first time, use the zoom consultation option over on ko-fi or coffee however it wants to pronounce itself or patreon the options are there you can hire me on zoom for an hour it always overruns we don't care do check those out otherwise there should be a written guide on today's comparison you can use the free support section over on nas compares on the right hand side of every page the discord the um ask nas compares community forum and of course go over to that ko-fi and patreon if you want early access to these videos expediated support content polls and our monthly zooms and seminars on the subject of storage thank you so much for watching and have yourselves a bloody great week